Ah, the nice clean breeze of a fall afternoon. What a better place to enjoy it than on the rooftop of my new hotel right here in central Tokyo. This place is perfect for you, it's perfect for your family, and today we're going to show you exactly how we made this place and also give you the tour of the inside. So without further ado, let's get started. It all started a couple of months ago when my business partner Yasu was looking around Japanese property websites and stumbled upon a gem of a property just minutes from our office in Hiro. Starting a hotel has always been a dream, and this house ticked all the boxes to become the perfect start to this journey. The size, while not being too big, is perfect for a pilot study, and the location is brilliant, being walking distance to both Hiro and Ebisu Station, while just being around the corner from the peaceful Arisagawa Park and Tokyo's premier international grocery store, National Azabu. All this while being less than 10 minutes by car to one of Tokyo's most popular areas to visit, Shibuya. Now, let's go see the before of this house. So, we just bought this house over here. We're in Ebisu, and it's not that big of a place, but we're going to turn it into a nice little boutique hotel. So, let's go inside. This is the most interesting place in this house. The whole house is only about 55 square meters or 600 square feet, so it's small, okay? Over three stories, it kind of feels a little small. But for some reason, the original owners of the place decide to make this entrance big, very big. You could actually fit a bed in here. Now, this will be a nice entrance with a little bit of a Japanese aesthetic to it, just because we are in Japan after all. And on this floor is a couple other things that I do want to show you. First off, over here is a little bit of storage, just to put your suitcases and all that kind of stuff. But right over here, this is the bathroom. It's very common in Japan to have the bath and, well, the bathroom on the first floor of the house, and this is no exception. So one thing I want to show you in here, this is a, it's a sink, right? So it's a pretty standard Japanese looking sink. You have all your, you know, cabinets and all that kind of of stuff, but it's made by Panasonic. Yes, that Panasonic. In Japan, they don't just make electronics, they make everything, including entire houses. This was not built by Panasonic, but everything in here, almost everything, is made by Panasonic. You have the washing machine, the toilets, uh, parts of the kitchen, the ACs, all that kind of stuff is all Panasonic, and this is no exception. But if you come into here, you'll see the bath itself. And, well, it's a standard looking Japanese bath. It's basically made out of resin, uh, kind of all put together like Legos. No leaks, but hey, you know, it's boring looking. So we are going to be completely gutting these rooms right here and making it into a very nicely done custom bath. It's actually the most expensive part of the entire renovation. And there is one more thing on this floor, so let's go see that. Which is right over here. This is the toilet. And as I said before, it's a Panasonic. Yes, I wasn't kidding. Oh, even the sink is Panasonic over here too. But that is it for this floor, so let's go upstairs. So this place was originally lived in by only two people, and this was the living, dining, and kitchen, just this entire floor. You're looking at the living room and dining room, basically. And the kitchen is right over here. We're not really going to do much to this floor other than just some cosmetic stuff. So it's going to look a lot different, but the parts are more or less going to be the same, including the kitchen. We are going to be changing this out for regulations, uh, and yeah, you can't have a gas stove in a hotel, apparently, so we have to make that into electric. But that is really it for this floor. Let's go upstairs and see the bedroom. So yes, this is the bedroom, or the main bedroom, because you can actually have a, maybe a pull-out sofa downstairs as well. And as you can see, it's surprisingly large for a house of this size, and we're gonna be fitting in an entire queen-size bed in here. One thing I wanted to point out, it's the same one uh, downstairs, but this is probably one of the largest AC units I have ever seen. And it's actually a very, very high-end one within, of course, the Panasonic range. This is one where if you stand right in front of it, it will actually divert the air away from you so that it's not blowing directly into your face. We're also going to be doing something with this, too. Right now, it is just a closet, but, uh, Probably gonna just turn this into a little work area or something like that. And otherwise, there's not much to do up here other than some cosmetic stuff. It's going to look a lot different when it is done and furnished and all that kind of stuff. But there is one more thing on this floor, which is another toilet, which is right 
in here. And uh, this is pretty rare to have in Japan. Most houses only have maybe one toilet, if, especially if it is a one bedroom just like this place. But this is, yeah, the same exact kind of toilet that is downstairs. You have your own sink in here as well. But yeah, it's a toilet. It does the job. It cleans your bum, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that is it for this room, but there is also a little secret on the roof, so let's go there. In the beginning, I may have said that the entrance was the best part of this place, but I think I have to revise that. This is the best part of the whole house. Yes, the rooftop balcony. It's not too big, but at the same time, it's very usable. You can stick a couple of chairs and tables up here, have some people over, have a couple of drinks, watch the sunset, all that good stuff. What we're going to do with this place is put a custom wood deck right on top of it, slap some walls around it, give it a nice, I don't know, vibe. Right, and around here though, you can see exactly how central this place is. We are in the middle of Ebisu, a very nice neighborhood in Tokyo. And look around you, just houses. There's no hotels around here. This is the only one, guys. And I'm very excited to see how it's going to look. So just a little recap on what we're going to be doing. On the first floor, we're going to be taking the bathroom, completely gutting it and making it real nice, doing some other cosmetic work in the process. Second floor, we're going to, well, not do much, but mostly cosmetic work, also replacing this guy right here. And on the third floor, well, it's just all cosmetic work, really. And this, the most important part, the rooftop. We're going to be putting a beautiful fence around it just to make it look real nice. And uh, yeah, a nice wooden terrace out there as well. I'll see you guys in a few weeks when this place is done. What was originally supposed to be a mostly cosmetic renovation ended up being a lot more than that. Due to fire safety regulations, we had to add fire-resistant walls and doors where there are none before, move other walls around, and do a lot of other things we didn't expect to need to do. Two teams of 5 to 10 of Japan's finest builders and contractors gathered together over the span of 45 days and proceeded to first tear everything down, then make them nice and new again. One team started with the bathroom, first stripping out the old resin Lego bath and prefab sink, while another team began working on stripping the old living room of its drab wallpaper and floors. This all took a few days, after which they began building the frame of the custom bathroom and laying all the water and drain pipes for the bath. During this time, the second team began to put up sticks for the new fire-resistant walls and doors on each floor, and carefully put up drywall everywhere they needed to. They did this all methodically, doing each task on every floor at the same time. Remove wallpaper, put new floors down, putty up walls, install new wallpaper, before making their way up to the top to install the custom-built wood deck and fence around the rooftop balcony. Meanwhile, downstairs, the bathroom team finished up with the water sealing process and moved on to tiling the bathroom. They did this one by one, perfectly straight, while the second team started on the smoke detector and fire alarm installation. This ended up being one of the most complicated steps in the whole equation, since Japanese law mandates that this fire alarm system all be hardwired and not wireless. Step by step, the place started coming together, and by the second half of the construction period, the teams moved on to the more cosmetic things, such as installing a wood panel on the living room, grouting the bathroom, and finally installing the new kitchen. More on that later. It was at this point that it started looking less and less like an active construction site, and after a little cleanup, it was ready to be delivered to us. 45 days of hard work later, and it's ready to go. But before we see how it looks now, let's go see the neighborhood. So I want to show you just how close it is from the station to Besso Hiro. Uh, it's right here. Well, that's the station, I should say. It's right here. And we just walked out, making around the corner, and, well, get onto the main little shopping street over here, which has a lot of cool restaurants and bars and uh, cafes and shops and all that kind of stuff. So let me actually show you a few of those. The first one being right over here. This is Eat Play Works, which is kind of like a combination of, I don't know, a food court, but like really, really high end. And then also a little bit of, if you know what Soho House is, so kind of like a community space where you can just go and work and meet new people and all that. And of course, on the first floor, you do have a blue bottle coffee. 
which is my favorite coffee place. But if you're not into Blue Bottle, you can just go across the street to the Starbucks over there. So coming a bit further down the street, we get to the pizza, which I wonder what they serve. Yes, they actually serve slices of pizza. There's only maybe four or five different places in all of Tokyo that have pizza by the slice. And this is one of them. So you can actually have a nice slice before you go to bed if you're just feeling a little peckish. Uh, and right across the street from that, you have, I think, the first location of And the Frites, which is a Belgian French fry place. So yeah, if you need your pommes frites, if you need your Belgian style French fries, then that's the place to go. And also, right down here, the last thing to show on the main strip before we get into the house itself is Homeworks. This is actually the first ever sandwich shop in Tokyo. It's from the 1980s and it's been here forever. And yeah, uh, get their BLT really good. There's one more thing I wanted to show you. It's right behind me. It's Natural Lawson. So if you don't know what this is, just imagine 7-Eleven and Whole Foods had a baby. Yeah, so it's basically a convenience store that also has a lot of organic stuff. And it's right down the street from Besso. But let's actually go there now. So you may be wondering, why did we end up making a hotel? And well, there's three reasons for that. The first reason being cost. These days, hotels are prohibitively expensive, especially in central Tokyo, with places nearby going for at least double the price of here, if you wanted to get a room of a similar size at least. And the second reason would be because we want to help families out there, right? Families coming to Tokyo, you can't stay in most hotels if you're more than four people per room, right? So with this place, you can easily fit four or five people without having to book another room like you normally would. And the third reason is because, well, we wanted people to be able to experience what life in Tokyo is like versus just what a hotel in Tokyo is like. And well, Here's the house. So I want to show you how you get inside of Besso Hiro, which you do with this tablet right here. If you just click on the check-in button, then you can use either a check-in code, a QR code, or just your phone number to get in. And well, this is all done remotely. You don't actually have to meet anybody, which is great, especially if you come at a weird hour of the day. And we don't give you a key, but we do give you a pin code, which you can use in this little keypad right here to let yourself in. And in we are. We are inside the entrance. Come on in. So the first place that your eyes may go to in this room is this, the dry bonsai. And I'm not an expert on dry bonsai, but I have a guy who is. So let's hear from the guy who made this. Bonsai artist no Fujita Shigeo desu. Zehi, atarashi Nihon no bonsai culture o otanoshimi kudasai. Kansei shita ano frame iri no akamatsu no dry bonsai desu. これのアドバンテージは軽い。we have changed a lot right over here in the rest of the bathroom. It's very common in Japan to have the bathroom separated from the toilet, and that is exactly what is going on over here. So first off, I want to show you just how nice it is in here. Yes, we've completely torn out the old one and put in a brand new one. Everything from the sink to the bath itself, which we'll get to in a second. And then also to this, the washing machine. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the whole place was outfitted with Panasonic. And while the old washing machine was old, it wasn't that nice. So we decided to get a brand new one, top of the line Panasonic Japan only JDM uh, washing machine with a combo dryer as well. So you'll be able to use that while you are here. But right over here, we have first off our vanity. It's a single vanity, but it does have plenty of space to the right and left of it just to put all of your stuff. And you can come into the actual bath area. This part, as I mentioned, we have completely gut renovated. This is not a standard fixture bath. This is a completely custom one and every part of this is custom made, which I love. And the bath itself, ooh, is a good size, I would say. And what I love about this is just how the water comes out of here, which I will not do right now because I don't want to get myself wet, but here's some b-roll to see what that looks like. Now, let's go see the rest of the place.
So now we're here on the living, dining, and kitchen floor. And I mean that because it is literally just the living, dining, and kitchen. A little bit of storage over there as well. But as you can see, you have a pretty sizable couch right over here. And this couch does have a little secret. Yes, if you just pull out this thing at the bottom, then you have a full-size bed right under here so you can fit maybe a couple more people in there, no problem. Oof. And right over here, this is an interesting thing that I've only seen in Japan because you have to remember in Japan, most houses and apartments are pretty small. So a lot of places don't have a proper dining table, this place included. So what do you do? You have a coffee table right here, but it's a little low, so it's kind of hard to eat on this. So somebody came up with the invention well, this invention of having pop-up tables just like this. So you can have your nice little glass of wine on here and have it at a good height as well while you're watching TV or chatting with your family or whatever you may be doing. And well, don't worry, it's not just for you. You can have one for a partner or other family members or something like that. So they can have their wine right over here as well. Let's just put that away. But right next to this, of course, we have a kitchen. And in the beginning of this video, I remember saying that I was not going to change the kitchen, but things have changed. As you can see, this is not at all the same kitchen we had before. We had to do this because this wall right here, and if it was in the original position, we literally would not have been able to fit this couch in here. So we had to move this wall a bit further in and hence put a slightly smaller kitchen in here. But this is a very high-end kitchen nonetheless. You have plenty of storage down here. If you open this up, you'll see you have all your plates and saucers and mugs and all that ready to go, plus some wine glasses, actually a lot of wine glasses, and other kinds of things just up here waiting for you. Plus we have a three burner induction heat stove. We can't have gas in a stove in a hotel in Japan, so we had to do this, but that's okay. And right behind that, of course, since we don't have an oven built in, we thought, you know, people are probably going to need an oven and of course a microwave at that. So we decided to put in the state-of-the-art Balmuda oven right over here. This is a Japanese brand, very high-end, and of course it plays music as well. And you turn it off. Very nice, put it out the seventh at the end. Right here, of course, we have our Bermuda um, little kettle as well. So very high-end things in here. So just like downstairs where we had the Panasonic washing machine that we decided to change out, up here we decided to change out the Panasonic fridge because, well, one, it was a little bit old, and two, it was gigantic for a place of this size. So we got a slightly smaller one, but this is also a very high-end one, so you can keep all of your drinks cold and anything else you want cold in there. Right next to me now is also the TV. Not too big, not too small. It's the Goldilocks size, so it's perfect to watch from this distance. And, well, that is pretty much it for this floor. So let's go see the actual bedroom. So now we're on the top floor, which is the bedroom. And it's actually a pretty sizable bedroom, to be honest. You have a queen-size bed right here. And this bed over here, though, is oh, very comfortable. Excuse the guts. But oh, I love having this size bed. You don't really get this in a place of this size in Japan. Usually it's going to be maybe a full or two singles or something like that. But this is a queen size bed, which is really nice to have. So right next to the bed is of course the last of the dry bond size. I did not mention this, but there is also a beautiful little one on the second floor. So uh, this is the third one. And I love this one more than any of them. It has this very kind of like windy look to it that just brings the whole room together and of course below that we have our handmade Japanese chest right there. Now also one other thing that I didn't mention about this floor is that it's not just a bedroom but also the second bathroom or well toilet at least so you won't be fighting with your entire family just to go to the bathroom. Now there is one more thing in here I do want to show you which is the roof so let's go see that. And now we are on the rooftop of Besohiro. And look at this, it's not the biggest, but it has everything you need. A couple of chairs, we're gonna add another one in the future. A little plant over there as well, and plenty of space to do your morning yoga or enjoy a little dinner with your family or some drinks. Have a little champagne up here as well and enjoy the view. Yes, you are so central up here and you can tell if you go 10 minutes by car that way, you're in Shibuya, like central Shibuya. You walk seven minutes that way, you're back in Hiro at that little shopping street that I showed you and another 12 minutes by foot that way, you're in Ebisu. 
It's so central. I just love everything about this area. So that's best so hero, guys. This place is here for you and your family to be able to experience what life in Tokyo is actually like without spending that much money. If you want to make a reservation here, you can go to the link in the description below. And until next time, thanks so much for watching.